tell us a story about someone at the Embark Center who really took advantage of what you have to offer there, really got great value out of being at the Embark Center. Oh my gosh, it's such a hard, that's such a hard request because there are so many people that I can choose from. So I'm gonna talk about a current member we still have. He, uh, he gave me permission to tell his story, but he asked me not to share his name. So he started with us a couple of years ago and our very first trial day with him, he climbed out of, we have a deck on our top level and he climbed onto our roof. And so that was his trial. He was on the roof. And when staff came, because some of our members let us know that he was up there and we asked him to get down, he said no. And I remember thinking, I don't know how this is going to work out. <laughs> this is going to be a real challenge. And so that was kind of what he was like. He really had this sort of, as we like to explain, some of the observations that we have with Embark is when people come from traditional school with all of the trauma that they bring with them, some people sort of, they implode a little bit, like they, they pull it inside. And then some people sort of explode out. And so we can see demand avoidance and, mm. you know, not the greatest strategies for navigating conflict. And so he was the explode guy. And so there were constant conflicts with him in the beginning with other members and choices he was making being safe in the space. And he really, really was struggling in the beginning being there. And so when we would work together about how he could be there, it was things like you could go only come in for one hour a day, or you can only come in for a mentor meeting, or you can only come in for a class. And so he sort of built himself back up into being able to be in the space full time. Mm. We sort of described it as taking a baby and throwing them into the deep end of a, bowl, a pool and being like, good luck. <laughs> and so that didn't really work for him at all. And so he did so much work and so much sacrifice and so much conflict resolution that now he is one of our people that the other kids will lean on. So he's very quietly co-regulating along with people when they're having conflict, or he's the person that they ask to bring as one of the observers for a conflict or as a friend to just sit by them. And he's just this integral wise person with our community sharing his experiences, but also really, really understanding what it's like to struggle and go through things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I wanted to say about him that was so representative of our community was that it did get to a point where we had a full community meeting about what to do. About, <laughs> we, we used to joke about like, what do we do about Maria? Right. right. And so, and everybody in our community said, we want to give him a chance. We want to give him a chance. Like we were given a chance we just know that it's harder for him. And he really is one of, um, everybody at Embark is valuable. Everybody is important with what they bring. But this particular person is really just a shining star of what, what he, he did and he worked on. How long has he been there? He has been there, I think, five years now. Okay. So, yeah, he's been here a while. Nice, nice. Yeah. Very cool. And and what was kind of, what, what age was he when he started out? I think he was about 12. No, no, okay. that can't be right. I think he was 11. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.